Hello and welcome to the video on measuring angles and arcs. By the end of this video, you should be able to define what a central angle is and find the measure of central angles. You should be able to tell me what an arc is and classify an arc. And you should be able to find the measure of an arc and the length of an arc. Our first definition here is a central angle. We need to know what the central angle of a circle is. Well, a central angle is basically an angle that has its vertex at the center of a circle. So if I draw a circle here and have two radii drawn in, I have basically created an angle. I'm going to call this angle ABC. This angle, angle ABC, is a central angle. Its vertex is at the center of the circle. Both of its sides are radii. The measure of all the central angles of a circle is going to be 360 degrees if those angles have no common interior points. What I mean by that is in this picture here now I've added a few other central angles and if I would take all these central angles, angles 1, 2, 3, 4, and 5, and add them together, I'm going to get 360. So what's an arc? Well, an arc is basically the part of the circle that is created by that central angle. The arc here is arc AC. And this part right here, that part of the circle, is an arc. There are three different classifications for arcs. The first is a minor arc. A minor arc is an arc that has a measure that's less than 180 degrees. Whenever we name a minor arc, we will always name it with two letters. We will use the endpoints of the arc. So in our example here, we have arc AC. The measure of arc AC will equal the measure of its central angle. So whatever the measure of angle ABC is, let's say it's 92 degrees, the measure of arc AC would be the same. The measure of AC is 92 degrees, just like its central angle. A major arc is an arc that has a measure that is more than 180 degrees, but less than 360 degrees. When I name a major arc, I will always use three letters. An example of this, arc DFE, is a major arc. It's the, basically the long way around the circle. The measure of that major arc would equal the measure of its central angle as well. So in this case, if I give you the measure of angle DGE and tell you that this is 70 degrees, then the measure of arc DFE would be 290 degrees because the arcs of a circle always add up to 360. I would do the 360 minus the 70 degrees. And a semicircle. Well, a semicircle is just half of a circle. It is named like a major arc. We will always use three letters to name a semicircle. The reason why you need to use three letters to name a semicircle is because if I would just call this JL, you wouldn't know which half of the circle I was talking about. If I wanted to talk about this half of the circle here, I would use, again, both endpoints and a point in between. So this would be arc J, K, L. Congruent arcs are exactly what they sound like. We've seen the word congruent plenty of times now. Congruent means they have the same measure. So two arcs that are congruent are two arcs that have the same measure. So our theorem here says in the same circle or congruent circles, Two minor arcs are congruent if and only if their central angles are congruent. What that's saying is in this picture, the only way that arc AB and arc BC are going to be the same size, or the only way they're going to be congruent, is if their central angles here have the same measure. So the only way that arc AB and arc BC would be congruent is if the measures of angles ADB and the measure of angle BDC are the same. So what are adjacent arcs? Well, adjacent arcs are two arcs that have only one point in common. So again, if I have two arcs, arc AB and arc BC are adjacent to each other because those two arcs have this one point, point B, in common. This brings us to the arc addition postulate. The measure of any arc formed by two adjacent arcs is the sum of the measures of those two arcs. What this is saying is that in this picture up here, the measure of arc AC, while well, arc AC, you'll notice, is basically this big arc right here, it's really made out of the two smaller arcs 
So the measure of arc AC is equal to the measure of arc AB plus the measure of arc BC. And one more concept, arc length. Now this is different than what we've been doing so far. All the arcs we've been talking about so far, we've just been talking about their measure. That measure was always in degrees. Well, arc length is not going to be in degrees. When I ask you to find the arc length of a circle, I'm really looking for the length of that arc. Essentially, in circle C here, if I want to know the length of AB, I basically want to know how long it is from A all the way over to B. As if I had a piece of string along that circle, I would want to know how long that string is. Or if I had a tiny little bug and he started at point A and started walking and got all the way over here to point B, how far did he go? Some notation that they're going to use to differentiate when they want the measure of an arc or its arc length is something like this. If I wanted to know the measure of arc AB, they'll put that M in front of it. The measure of arc AB. If they ever put that M in front, they're saying they want their answer in degrees. My answer here might be 91 degrees or something like that if this central angle is 91 degrees. If I don't put that M in front of it, well, I'm basically saying that I now want the arc length of AB. This is going to be a distance. My answer is going to be so many units, maybe inches or feet. In order to do a problem like this, I'm going to have to give you a little more information. I would also have to tell you either a radius or a diameter in this circle. Let's say that CB is 7 inches. Well, I can now ask you what the length of AB is. And to do that, I basically want a part of the circumference. If you remember our circumference formula from a previous video, when I'm given a radius, I can say that circumference is 2 times pi times radius. Or if I was given a diameter, I could say circumference is equal to pi times diameter. I basically want just part of that circumference. How many parts of it do I want? Well, in this case, I'm going to want 91 out of 360 parts of that. To write that as a generic formula, I want the number of degrees of the central angle over 360 times my circumference. That formula will get us the length of an arc. So in our case, if I wanted to find the length of arc AB, I would say that I want 91 parts out of 360 times my circumference formula because I'm given CB and that's a radius, I'm going to say times 2 times pi times the 7 inches. So now to figure out what AB is, I would just plug that into a calculator. And when I do that, I get about 11.1 .1 inches. So let's try some examples. Example number one. What's the measure of arc BE? Well, notice with two letters given, BE, this is a minor arc. We want to know the measure of that arc right there. Well, the measure of any minor arc is equal to the measure of its central angle. Since angle DFA is 50 degrees, I know its vertical angle here is also 50 degrees. So that's the measure of arc BE. Part B, the measure of arc DBE. Well, DBE says to start at D, go through B, and then all the way to E. Well, if this is a diameter here, then that is a semicircle. The measure of a semicircle is always equal to 180 degrees. And part C, find the measure of arc ACE. Again, we start at A, go through C all the way around to E. I want to know the measure of that arc. Well, this is clearly more than half a circle, so this is a major arc. I know that this part here was a semicircle, so it's 180, plus this arc AD would be another 50. When I add those together using my arc addition postulate, I get 230 degrees. Problem two, in circle P, PR is 15, and the measure of angle QPR is 120 degrees. We want to find the length of QR. Notice how they didn't put that little M there, so this is an arc length problem. I'm going to use the arc length formula. 
the arc length formula again is the number of degrees over 360 times the circumference. And I chose 2 times pi times radius this time for circumference because I was given a radius. When I plug in what I need here, QR is going to be 120 over 360 times 2 times pi times 15. The length of QR would be 31.4. In problem number four, find the measure of our DF and the measure of our BCF, given that the measure of angle CAD is 25x, the measure of angle DAE is 2x, and the measure of angle EAF is 3x. Well, let's start by trying to figure out what x is. You'll note here that CF, this length right here, is a diameter. If that's the case, I know that this is a semicircle. Therefore, the central angles here also have to add up to 180. I can say that the 25x, the 2x, and the 3x here all have to add up to 180. If that's the case, after combining my like terms, I get 30x is 180. And when I divide by 30, I get x is 6. Now that I know what x is, I can plug that back in to get the measure of these angles. 25 x's would be 150 degrees, 2 x's would be 12 degrees, and 3 x's would be 18 degrees. Now the question really asks, what's the measure of arc DF and the measure of arc BCF? Well, DF is listed with two letters, so I know it's a minor arc. DF, if I mark that here in green, is really that arc right there. Well, our condition postulate says that the measure of that bigger arc is really the measure of the two arcs put together. The 12 plus the 18 would be 30 degrees. And the measure of arc BCF, well, since it's using three letters, that should be a semicircle or a major arc. If we look for that, BC all the way around to F, I can add up all four of those smaller arcs. Or in this case, it might be easier to say that if angle CAD is 150, then angle BAF is also 150. So our BF is 150 degrees. If I just take 360 and subtract that 150, that would give me the remainder here. So I get 210 degrees.